Back on the Toffee TV, it is the match preview. Everton versus Liverpool. The last ever Merseyside derby. Premier League Merseyside derby. I have to say that, don't we? Because yeah, the yeah. FA Cup. Last ever Premier League Merseyside derby at Goodison Park. I don't like derbies, but it has to be said. No. Um, the nerves will be jangling for this one. Obviously, Liverpool, top of the league, absolutely flying at the moment. But, James, going into this one, at least Everton are on the back of a, a good 4-0 win against Wolves. Absolutely. I mean, we went the whole of November without a goal, but now we've got four. <laughs> and should have been six. And we even had other chances on top of that that we didn't put in. Mm. But... I think for me, going into this game, now that we have scored and we've got that off our back a bit that we can't really score, gives me a bit more confidence as an Everton fan that, you know, we're going to proper go at them, or at least you'd hope so, and, you know, maybe we'll take the game to them instead, because mm. it was at home as well. I think that the interesting one for this is obviously Liverpool, I think, have won twice at Goodison Park since 2011. Wow. So mostly they've been to us. Yeah. Everton obviously won last year. Um been a, quite a few nil nil draws in that time as well. There's been a three three in that time, a two two in that time. But generally, of late, there's been more there's draws. been draws than more draws than defeats. Um, Stop them from winning the league with a draw. We did, we did. But obviously, the, since 2016, the only one they won was Rafa Benitez. One they beat us four um, one, yeah. and that that wasn't great that night, obviously. But don't count that one. The flat no, no, we <laughs> Rafa through it. Yeah, yeah. Um but they are a they are a really, really top side. They, they're so dangerous in the final third. Yeah. Whoever they choose, they've got six players. I know Jota's injured, I think, at the minute, isn't he? But they've got Gakpo and Diaz. Um, Diaz, they've got Nunes. He hasn't really even, hit this season, but he's still a threat. He's a threat, isn't he? You know, and he, he, even the midfield as well, they keep picking up goals everywhere. And we've got Salah, who's just yeah. incredible, isn't he? And he's always seems to be Liverpool's talisman. We'll look at him a little bit later. But going into it, because they've just played Newcastle and left three goals in, mm. and obviously, certainly the third goal was really poor. Everton are so strong on set pieces. Yeah. Or I mean, the other night we, we scored three goals of our four were set plays, yeah. and we had another one disallowed. Yeah. Um, so and seeing the way Kelleher decided he's couldn't be asked catching a ball and, yeah, and sharp it was a weird thing. Um, does that give you hope that that might be an avenue of success for Everton in this game? Absolutely. I mean, we as you said against Wolves, three of our goals were set pieces, and mm. the other one was winning the third ball or something from a mm. set piece. So I'm going into it loads of confidence, especially if you consider last year. Calvert Lewin's the second goal was a header off Calvert Lewin, wasn't it? Off a corner, so, yeah. In fact, both goals are off set pieces. I know it was Brantwaite's one was a reaction, but it was a free yeah, kick yeah. killed him. So both goals came from set plays last season. And so we've got a we've got a record, a bit of a history mm -hmm. of scoring set pieces against mm -hmm. them. They're weak at them at the minute. So I don't see how Everton can't be confident going into this that we can get at least one or two goals from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mad, isn't it? Given, positive, yeah. given before the Wolves game, we oh, yeah. scored, you know, we'd had one goal in whatever many games it was. We hadn't scored in all of November, like you mentioned. I mean, the, the reality is, I think, mm. if both teams play to the full potential, they should win because the, the, what are they, nine, uh, seven, seven no? points clear at the top of the Premier League. They've won 11 out of 13, 14 yeah. games, two draws and a defeat, haven't they? So they are a top side, we know that. It could it, it could go the other way, and if they they click, they could they could beat us. But the last ever, yeah, Goodison derby. Do you think that'll? How much do you think that'll play into it, or do you do you just think once they get on the pitch, players aren't thinking this is the last ever one? Do you think no, they'll think be definitely be a part of do you? it? Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Because you've seen, you know, we've been in bad form, and the derbies came around, and then there's that more of a boost. Mm. You know, whether it's. You know, the likes of like Seamus Coleman or someone remind the people of how important it is in the changing room. Yeah. Or just seeing the fans be more up for the game. Mm. I think if you're a player and you're going into the derby and it's the last one, you want to end it on a high. Mm. And if you look through the Everton team, there's a few players who have been here for quite a while now mm. who will definitely know what it means to the city and the people. So you want to end on a high. And also that statistic of us both being on the same amount of wins at Goodison, mm. you want to end it in our favour. You? And that's just the added extra motivation. I think the thing what, what I find interesting with it is is that do you think that you just said it there players will understand it now do you think that win in April will have really opened some of our players eyes to Definitely. like oh my god these like the crowd like how much they love you when you win a derby yeah. and that'll be like a muscle memory for them going into it yeah absolutely well 
you hear it a lot, don't you? When you say like they don't really realise how big until you come into the city and then you mm. see how it just everyone's engrossed in it. And I think, you know, each year you see Coleman's rallied the troops up and let them all know and mm. just you hope he does that again and then we go out and we really put our all into it because mm. as you said, I mean, I know it was three all but there's definitely weaknesses with Liverpool and hopefully you can try and exploit them and it just so happened their weaknesses just so happened to be our strengths. Mm. So you'd hope we can get something from it and maybe that's just me being too positive because we just won 4-0 but I'm hoping for the best I'm going to be positive with it you've got to have yeah. because we, we could sit here and say all the reasons we've why we've enough on the, well, no yeah. but we could yeah. sit here and say all the reasons why they should win and the neutral would sit here and go yeah. Liverpool will win because they're better or they've done this or they've done that but that derbies aren't like that I mean listen again we could be sat here doing the final word on Monday and it's ended 3-0 yeah. to Liverpool and we just couldn't get it but that's, that's life but we, we've had a win and we've got to be positive because we're going into it like a really difficult run of fixtures, aren't we? We've mm. got Liverpool at home, Arsenal away, Chelsea at home, City away. They're not the kind of fixtures you'd handpick, are they? Yeah. So it's going to be really tough. We know that. I want to just talk about Liverpool for a minute, given that it's a preview. <laughs> um, and slots coming. Now, I, I've been surprised how well they've done. I thought really? there might be a little bit of a hangover from Jürgen Klopp. Klopp was incredible for them. They loved them, they idolised them, and he's moved on. And I, I, I know Slot done really well in Holland, mm -hmm. but I'm surprised how well they've done. One of the things he's done is he's give Liverpool more control, yeah. I think, in games. I think with Jürgen Klopp, they were a little bit more chaotic, yeah. and that was it's what that rock and roll football. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, it made it difficult. It was heavy metal for them. Oh, heavy metal, sorry. heavy metal, heavy not metal. rock and roll. That's something else. Yeah. Um, maybe that's dice. Um, <laughs> they were. It was chaotic. It was. It was fast, and particularly when they had Firmino, Mane, and Salah, they were. It was horrible. Like yeah. they just swarmed all over you. But Klopp did have that. They were brilliant, and they got results. Of course they did, but it was a bit chaotic, and I think sometimes in that chaos you could catch Liverpool. Mm. What Slot seem to have done this season, and okay, Newcastle showed that if you get at them, yeah. they have got eyes who's brilliant, but it showed if you get at them, you can cause them problems. He's given them that element of control, mm. I think, where they're still doing the things they're very good at, which is the front play. But at the back, they've been a bit more controlled than in midfield. Gravenberg yeah. has been really good for them in midfield. How do you think, how much difference do you think that will make in this derby that it, we will be coming across sort of like a different Liverpool than we've seen for the last eight years when we've yeah. met them? I think... Because we give the ball up anyway, don't yeah. we? You know, against big teams, we sort of go, oh, yeah, they, we don't want it. They can so, have it and we hope for the Yeah, best. yeah. Well, I think, like everyone, I'm surprised as well about how well slots fill Klopp's shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think they have added that sort of solidity to the like, back line and they look much more composed, but... Mm -hmm. They also attack at the right moment and use the sort of chaotic football brand that Klopp had at some mm. points. But it is, it is going to be different, but I'm hoping that, you know, they've had a few injuries in their back line. You know, Canate's injured, Bradley, mm. Simakas. And I think I'm hoping that that shuffle in the back line and sort of switching partnerships and stuff, mm. that Everton will be able to capitalise, that they don't really know each other as well as, you know, Canate's been amazing this season, so he's mm -hmm. a big miss for them. So I'm hoping that Everton will get a chance with that, but I'm not too sure. And then obviously the midfield, they haven't got McAllister. Yeah, it's who's a, a big, big, blow, big miss. It? And I think like everyone, I'm really surprised at how well Gravenberch has done. Mm -hmm. Because at the start of the season, everyone was saying out they're not having a proper established number six is mm -hmm. what's gonna put drag them down. Mm -hmm. But he's filled the slot perfectly and Well he was he was brilliant in Holland and yeah. obviously he went off to Bayern Munich and he, he, he didn't wear for whatever reason, but Arn Slot obviously knows his quality yeah. and he's just put him in a position where he has the ball and he's so comfortable and he's a good athlete, isn't he? So you're right, he's done brilliantly for them. But them injuries will be key and yeah, I know yeah. Trent Alexander Arnold is back back with two assists in mm -hmm. midweek. Uh so he'll obviously strengthen them. But it's at, the it's at the centre. It's at the centre of the the pitch though, isn't it, for them with alongside Van Dyke. Is it is it Jarrell Quanza? Did he play in? Did he play Joe Gomez? Yeah. Let's have a look at the Liverpool team that drew three three at Newcastle. So there we go there. And like we said, you know, he tried Quanza at right back in that one. Joe yeah. Gomez was was Van Dyke's partner there, Robertson at left back. McAllister, who we know, like you've just said, is missing through suspension. He's got Gravenberts there, then obviously Curtis Jones, Salah, Gakpo and Darwin Nunes. Um, 
they've got a they've got a lot of talented players, but McAllister will be a miss. They can't Absolutely, they can't yeah. sort of uh, skate over that. So that's a positive for Everton. And, and again, like you've just said, the Conarty thing mm -hmm. is a big thing because I know Dominic Calder-Lewin done brilliantly against them in April. He dominated Conarty and Van Dijk. Yeah, but he's really took a few one. steps this season. I feel like, but but obviously he's not there. So there's definitely there's definitely. Hope for Everton, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Our defence is going to have to be brilliant yeah. because, like we talked, Mo Salah is absolutely phenomenal for them. But, I mean, let's have a look at the Everton side first and foremost. That beat Wolves four 0 We can talk about whether we think there'll be any changes. Obviously, Ashley Young at right back, Tarkovsky, Brantwaite, Michalenko left back. He had Garner and Mangala in midfield. He done really well at the core eight, the tip of that, and then obviously. He had Illiman and Jai and Dwight McNeil and why there is Dominic Calvert-Lewin through the middle. Do you expect any changes to that lineup for Sean Dyke, or do you think he'll just say same again? I think he'll just say same again because mm. I think with the likes of Salah, you know, you want Michalenko who's a bit more of a defensive fullback, and mm. you know he's had success with defending against Salah in the past as well. And then I think for the midfield, you know, people don't really like to call it as the ten, which mm. is fair enough. But I think for a game like this, you want him to be pressing high, and you know he's got that ability to drop deep, and mm. you know he's got a lot of energy, and, and he will behave, challenge them. He? Yeah, so as I think well, which again, set plays. So I think for me, you've sort of got to keep the same team. Mm. I think dying Dwight McNeil, people have criticised Dwight McNeil, but I feel like against Wolves, all of the set pieces were him, and you know we can you can find that space, that area in the box. And then sort of Everton can attack them set pieces and hopefully he's, get some success. He's special teams, Dwight McNeil, isn't he? As in, he, he didn't have a good game against Wolves, yeah. but he's come up with a, a couple yeah. of assists from brilliant crosses, and that's what he's got. He's got time and set yeah. plays. He's really effective. The other bits of his play, he needs to improve. But for a game like this, where let's be Might honest, we're not. We scored thirteen goals in thirty-five games. In 2024, from open play, yeah. 13. Mo Salah's got 13 on his own yeah. this season. Do you know what I mean? So our chief amount of goals you just said there as well. Everton's other, you know, Everton's other goal in the, the Wolves game was a second phase off a set piece. Yeah. So yeah. you know that's that's how important the set plays have been, and, and Dwight McNeil will be important be for them in this game. And I think you're right with the core, eh? the height. Mm. The the energy, the the ability to drop in and make it a real three in midfield yeah. will get him the nod. My only fear is Calder Lewin's isolated then because Liverpool will have that much of the ball, but that's that's the way it is, and it's up to Everton to yeah. to cope with that, isn't it? Do you Just, think it's too soon for Brozier to maybe get a chance? At yeah, start lineup. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. I think he, he literally came on for a cameo the other night, mm, but it was Just a good appearance get... where he did create a lot. And it was sort of held the ball up well. Listen, that's mm. it's a great option. Yeah, isn't it? It's a great option for the manager to have on the bench but because if it's just tight, you at the minute. If it's yeah, I wouldn't be. Listen, I think you. I think Dom had a good game the other night. He was on. He, he thought he'd scored two goals and were both yeah. taken off him by Craig Dawson, who I'm sure didn't want them. Um, I think Sean Dyke just said that in a press conference. I think Craig Dawson would have been happy to go. Yeah, they're both yeah, Calvert Lewin the goals. Um, so, but he did have a good game, Dom, and if he can take that form in to Saturday and and give Van Dyke a bit of a tough time and and whether it be Jarrell Quantra or Joe Gomez, then then so be it. Um, we did mention Mo Salah mm. just a second ago. Let's have a look at him. We've identified him, unsurprisingly, as Liverpool's danger man going into this game. There's his stats for the season. 14 games played, 13 goals from an XG of 10.46. He's got eight assists and he's created seven big chances all off that right-hand side. 21 goal contributions. Crazy. Absolutely Unbelievable he is for them. Best right winger in world football. I mean, yeah, he, he is, is isn't yeah. He? And I'm surprised that there's still so much talk about whether he's getting a new contract, to be mm. honest. I think he's shown just how vital he is to Liverpool in their mm. attack. I think as well, you know, you say about you've got six really good forwards. He's absolutely smashing them all and the mm. amount of numbers he gets from the right wing position. So I think for me, he's the real danger man, someone that Everton will definitely have to double up on and be a bit afraid of. On the weekend, definitely, and and I think I've seen Jordan Pickford's made something like fifteen saves in the last two derbies, but Everton have had two clean sheets in them games, so he's going to be key for Everton again, mm, isn't he? Absolutely. Jordan and obviously Mo Salah. Um, Everton will have to watch him. Michalenko has generally done quite well against Salah, yeah. hasn't he? Really, mm. um, 
and he's going to need another good game at the weekend because Salah is he's Liverpool Salah's man like you've just said and what Evan have to be wary of is you're trying to keep him quiet they've got others haven't they yeah. you know, they've got Curtis Jones who comes up with a goal or you know Nunes who doesn't really I mean, he scored as many goals as Michael Keane in the Premier League yeah. this season but uh, but it's a threat isn't he the pace and that he, he can yeah. you know and then Gakpo and Diaz you know there's so many of them that we've, we're going to have to be compact and tight and dig in aren't we but the win will give Everton loads of confidence the fans will be banged yeah, yeah, up for it Liverpool no matter what they say not how good they are don't like going to Goodison Park they don't like it mm -hmm. and this is an opportunity don't forget the pressure's on Liverpool in this one everyone yeah. expects them to win they just dropped even up to good results at Newcastle yeah. and they've been in incredible form they'll still look at his two points dropped he was three two up in injury time mm. so going to Goodison the fear will be what if we don't win again and, and Arsenal and City win so there's a lot of pressure now on Liverpool mm. let's hope Everton can squeeze it out of it it'll be tough it'll be tough on Everton things I imagine will have to go well for Everton as well but who knows we beat yeah. them last season why not do it again this season absolutely and you know, gotta be constant. Gotta be constant. Gotta be positive. Anything could happen. Yeah. Come on, Blues, do it. Last ever Premier League Merseyside derby. Good listen. Let's go and win it. Go and do it. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. It's a tough game, of course. Probably the toughest game you could have at the moment. Um, barring the one at Anfield, which is beaten tougher. <laughs> but let us know what you think. Make sure you like, subscribe, and if you want to become a Toffee TV Premier member, the link is in the description. The QR code will be on the screen now. See you later. Up the Toffees.